Hello everyone and welcome to MATLAB Helper's live coding session on uh, like we'll be learning to code few basic games in this session. This session is organized in association with Arawat Foundation and we'll be covering two games in this session. One is uh, we'll be doing the Super Mario game and another will be playing Tic-Tac-Toe. Yes, you heard it right. We'll be also coding it using MATLAB. So I am Aditya Chaudhary and I'll be explaining you Super Mario game. Just hold on for a second uh, while we introduce Gunjan. Hello everyone. My name is Gunjan and I'm going to cover the lack on Tic Tac Toy. So we have already covered our first webinar. And in that webinar, we have covered the game on Sudoku as well as rock, paper and scissor. For those who have missed our webinar, don't worry, you can still watch us live on that session. We have kept that video completely live so that you can watch it later on. In the same time, Aditya is trying to showcase you the game on Mario part, which will be covered in the later section of the live session on this webinar. Aditya, please play the game on Mario so that our audience can see what they will be getting in the later stage of the session. insight on this game what you were seeing earlier was being played using matlab so the code was executed in matlab and then you were playing the mario in matlab yes in matlab anyway so i will be covering the portion of tic tac toy in the meantime i'm setting up my screen you guys uh, do you guys know about tic tac toy i guess yes every one of you would have heard on tic tac toy how exactly the game is played what are the rules of tic tac toy etc but if you don't know about it, I'll be talking about it in the couple of minutes as I go ahead. First of all, we will be starting with app designer. So in our first session, we used GUI in MATLAB to design the Sudoku. In this section, we will be using app tool. And in app tool, we will be creating the game on tick, tech and toy. So in a tick, tech toy, usually there are a three cross three elements where you can cross uh, or you can put oh based on that the values the elements are taken around i would like to discuss the same along with my friend of amit who is coming us from arawat foundation amit please introduce yourself uh, hey everyone this is amit all right so amit let us discuss the game on uh, game on tic tac toy let's play a tic tac toy game so that rest of the person whoever is watching the session is able to know what are the rules of tic tac and toy i'll be opening a screen just give me a second all right okay so in this screen we will be talking about the tic tac toy go game let me just draw the simple boxes so usually this is a three cross three element you can consider it as a box where one person is putting value over here second here third fourth fifth sixth so shall we play a sing game Okay. All right. So let's start with you. What would you like to choose first of all? Tell me. Uh, the center one. Center one. All right. I would take X over here. What would you choose next? Okay. Uh, that corner one. All right. Okay. So you're being smart at this time. So I'll be choosing this X. Okay. So now this one. Center one. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is the X. What would you choose next? Uh, this one. That's it. All right. So you see the game has reached to a stage when it's a tie. So we will be using this kind of an example in this session and talking about the different way using which the tic tac toy can be designed from this. At the same time, I would also like to thank Arawat Foundation who along with them, we are able to associate or we are able to organize this game. Arawat Foundation's main objective 
is to support human progress through innovation and technological advancement. And it's a non-profit organization who is working for the betterment of society. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. I'll be taking a taking ahead okay. and talking about the session in the Tech Tech Toy. Thank you. All right. Single app with a label, which will show us whose turn is it right now. We will also be using different buttons through which we will be able to press. And based on the example, we'll be able to decide whose turn or whose element was it. And in the end, we have a button over here extra, which will create us in a new game. So this is the simplest example using which uh, we are able to design the portion of this tick tech and toy. Let us go ahead and design the same thing in MATLAB. All right, so let me take this over here. As we have already discussed, we are going to have different buttons. So I'll start with over here. To make it simple, I'll just make it blank. Or rather than blank, I'll just keep it in the pattern like that. Uh, next, let me resize it in a smaller portion. So this is going to be nine buttons in the same fashion. All right, since we are doing it in a very good way, we shall be, we shall make it a design look good for the same. Paste it. And paste it again. So we have received nine buttons, which a person can press for tic tac and toy. Next, we are going to have the label. So let me add the label over here in the center. And we also need an extra button. This button will take care of the new game portion. So we have taken all the buttons from the left hand side. Now you guys will concentrate mainly on the main portion of the screen. I would also use the portion of uh, right side for the component properties. So let me use it over here. All right, so you guys have seen that there are different buttons from one to 10. Uh, since the button one is not being named button underscore one, I'll just rename it button underscore one so that it will be easier for us to proceed ahead in the game uh, to code easy. That's the main motive. I'll also rename the label to, let's say I want to welcome you guys. Welcome to Tic Tac Toy from MATLAB Helper. So when we do it, the name of the uh, button uh, name of this label is also changed. So I would be renaming it. I'll just renaming it to label again, which is helpful for us to code in the run. Uh, let me increase the size so that it looks very much precise to you guys. And in the bottom section, it's a button part, which I'll be renaming to new game. So as of now, we have done the portion of uh, screen, how exactly it will be looking up. Let's just run this thing and see how this app would be looking up. I also will save it. I'll be taking the name. I'm just giving it a name, Tic Tac Toy and saving it. All right. So I guess now you guys can see the screen. The game is loading. And in this game, it's completely showing us the figure. It's still loading. So UI figure is the name. Welcome to Tic Tac Toy. There are buttons, but nothing has been coded as of now. So nothing is something uh, happening right now. What shall we do post that? Shall we make the look good or shall we make the code first? I would go with the look first. So I'll just make the look of this figure better so that when I'm running it, you are able to see the part in a much better fashion. I'll be changing the color. All right, let's just run it once more. And again, as you can see, the game is showing Tic Tac Toy as a title and the game's look is much better than the earlier version. All right, so now we shall start the coding of this main program. When the function is executed, or rather I should say when this application is executed, there would be a startup function. That startup function would execute this uh, startup function dot callback and we will be coding what exactly want to happen at the initial stage of this execution. So 
until the person is clicking on new game we don't want that person to start the new or start the game with so i'll just disable all the button at the startup of execution of this program so we can simply type app dot button one underscore sorry button underscore one dot enable is equals to off. Uh, in the meantime, when I'm typing, if any of you have any question, feel free to comment. I'll be taking your queries in the later section. Later session, uh, let's discuss the portion of the game. Uh, since all the buttons are similar, I'll be disabling them We're using copy paste. So button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Let me just rename it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now what we have raised is function will execute and all the buttons would be disabled. Let's just try, let's just run the program again. This time when I run this run this application, it shall give us a disabled button. So I cannot click on any of the button right now. See, but nothing is happening when I click on new game. So. Uh, what we are what we are going to do next is when the person clicks on new game, all the button will get enabled, and we will have some elements which would help us in creating this tic tac toy game. So, what exactly is the essential part of this tic tac toy? We have one uh, this three cross three element. So, we need to have a matrix which can give us the position who's uh, like player one or player two, which player has uh, done what kind of filling, and we also want to know whose turn is it. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a property, a property which is public. So let me change the size of screen so that you guys can see it. I'll go in the properties part and click on public property. In the public property, as just discussed, we are going to add two part. One is which player move is right now. So I'm using PL underscore move. Uh, I'm going to use one for player one. So if the value of that would be one, we know that the player one turn is right now. And if it's two, then it's the move of player two right now. Okay, next we are going to have a mat, which will signify the matrix. We will have it three cross three, but we will be defining it in the portion of our main game. So let's jump back to the main screen, a new game and call back to the function. All right, so when we do it, we are going to have this button push function, new game button post. What shall happen? As already discussed, all the button will be enabled. That's the first thing which is gonna happen. So I'm going to make all the values changing from off to on. And the same thing as we did for the button one, we are going to have it done for all the buttons. Oh, every button will be on. So two, three, four, so. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We also want to change the label app dot label dot text, and we'll assign that the value of player, which player's turn is right now. So let me assign it the turn of player one. We will assign the value of player's move. So let's just have it app dot pl underscore move equals to one as we have already done and next we are going to have that matrix defined so the matrix will be three cross three so what shall we start with uh, let's let's just have a minus one value in all the elements so minus one multiplied by ones three comma three all right so we have basically started the game this time when i run the system run this program this will be giving us the result in tune of the application. Application would be disabled. Again, clicking on new game will enable all the buttons. So what is gonna happen? We are going to code next. All right. So if any of you have any question with respect to the program as of now, please feel free to comment. We will be taking your queries at the later end of the session. Now I'll start the game with the button one. We are pushing the button one. What shall happen when the button one is pushed? Does anyone of you have any idea with respect to that? 
I can't see any comment, so I guess I need to help you. I will need to help you guys for that. Button one is post, so we need to define or we need to know what was the players who is the player is who is going to press it. So if app dot player underscore move is equals to one, we'll consider that that the player one's turn is right now. First thing would be let's change the label that next turn is of player two. Now it's turn of player two. I'm just changing it to that. We also want to change the value of player move, so I'm just defining it app dot pl underscore move equals to two. Next, we want that the button which was pressed by player one should become o. So let's take a proper syntax that the player one will always have value o, and player two will always have a value cross with him or her. So I'll gonna have app dot button. This is button underscore one dot text. It would be changed to O as just discussed. All right. So if the condition isn't matching, so if no, it wasn't the player one. What shall happen? It is the else condition. And in else condition, the same thing should be happening. What shall be happening in that? We will be changing the player one. So I'll. Turn it in the turn of player one, changing the player move from two to one, and button one text to cross. We have done it for player one. We need to do it same for all the buttons. In a way, on all these nine options, we need to define accordingly. All right. So I'll just copy the same thing and I'll go to the button part. And add a push to all the fun all the buttons now. So this is button two dot text. Sorry. All right. Now I just want to show you guys what we have done for the two buttons. How exactly it's happening? Whether it's happening or not, whatever is the issue, we'll check on as we keep on proceeding. So I run the program again. I'll click on new game. All the buttons will get enabled. I haven't coded all the buttons from three to nine, so clicking them doesn't matter anything. Is not happening anything. Now, when I click the button number one, changes to O, and it says now it's turn of player two. Since I already coded the button number two, when I click on it, should give me X and player of, turn of player one. Again, I click it. Now it's turn of player one. Don't you think we should disable the button so that once our element is filled, it's completely filled? So we need to. Uh, change the button, or need to disable the button once it has been executed or it has been clicked. So I'll be changing the code and adding app dot button underscore one dot enable is off. All right. Uh, we created a matrix M A T. What is the use of that? None of you guys asked it. We shall be using. We shall be keeping the values of who. Pressed it, and what we will be doing it is app dot mat. It's a three cross three. So this is the first row, first column, one comma one, and we are going to define the value as one for the player one, and in the similar fashion, we are going to have the value two for the player two. Let me do the same quickly for the button number two. It is first row, second column, so we are going to change it to one comma two, value one. Again, value two over here. So post that we are disabling the button. So I'll be keeping it quickly to disable app dot button underscore two dot enable equals to off. All right, so let's just run the session again. Okay, so as I'm running this this time. Is there any noticeable change which you guys would be noticing? I think yes. When I click this button, the button became disabled, and we are not able to press the same button again. Whatever I do, the button is disabled now. You cannot click it. Now, when I click cross, this button also got disabled. So we need to do the same thing with all the buttons. I'll be doing it quickly for all the buttons. 
in the meantime i would request you guys to give your feedback with any suggestions which you have we are also going to cover a live session on 5th october this live session will be on the karaoke extraction so you guys should if you guys are interested in that karaoke extraction which is finding the instrumental or acoustic part from the music you should register yourself and tune it based on your preferred slot moving back to the button 3 so in the button 3 when the button 3 is being pressed we will change it three text text of three this is first row and third column and the button third is off since i'll be doing it same for all the buttons i'll first click on add button in all the buttons rather than creating or pasting code individually i'll be just doing it one by one so i want to expedite it for you guys i'm clicking on add button for the fifth button post function is already prepared uh, next we have button number 6 we are pressing that next we have the button number 7 so i'm pressing it button number 8 and finally the button number 9 so once i'm done with it we will be pasting and changing the code for these buttons okay when the button 4 is pushed this is matrix of row 2 column 1 so quickly changing it 2 comma 1 1 comma 2 value button 4 is getting changed so button 4 text is being replaced with next we have button number 5 so that is row 2 column 2 again this is button 5th text is getting changed i hope you guys can see my screen properly if you are not able to see the screen or if you are facing any issue please comment i am going to take your queries later on is pressed we are going to have the button 6 text this is row 2 and column 3 and row 2 column 3 button 6 all right i guess none of you is having any issue that's why i cannot see any comment button 7 is pressed so this is third row and first column button 7 text is getting changed and button 7 is marked as enable or disabled next we have the button number 8 so we are going to have it 3 comma 2 that is row third column 2 same way for button number 9 so as of now we have taken up all the buttons and based on the click of a person we are able to see the matrix or actually whose click it was let me show it to you guys when i run the function okay we have the button disabled i'm clicking on the new game all the buttons get enabled o x should be o x o x o x wow triple x the game should be over we didn't even created a logic as of now regarding the game portion so what is the mean or the heart of this code would be the logic okay so let me take you guys back to my whiteboard okay so in this gaming we have the elements in tune of a11 a21 a31 this is a12 a a13 this is a22 a23 
a3 to a3 3 now how exactly a tic tac toe wins or the rules are one if you're horizontally matching so that's the rule one horizontal okay now another is the vertical part if all the elements matches in the vertical order one person wins and the third is if the diagonally elements are matching on any side on any diagonal then the person is winning so we need to code in the fashion that if any matrix element is matching in this particular order the game is won and the game should stop at that particular interval so let me just show you guys again the portion where we can create function so you can see the function part over here i'll be clicking on the public function we will be creating a public function i want to give it a name as calculate since this will be calculating part only and along with the app app which is the original application we will be passing the matrix m let's just simply give it a name m we don't need to give it any result so i'll just have it function calculate okay so if see when three horizontally elements are matching this is more like if matrix m's element 1 comma 1 is matching with the element of 1 comma 2 this is the one condition at the same time the element 2 should match with the element 1 or sorry element 3 so 1 comma 2 should be matching with 1 comma 3 we are actually coding the horizontal part first so let me just mention it so that none of you guys get confused please explain why the code has written in that manner only uh, Siva, you need to explain your question. I didn't got your question. So please explain your query again to me, please. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just commenting horizontal part. I'll be coding this thing. So vertical part. And then we will have the diagonal part. Okay. So if M11, M12 is matching, then M12 is matching with M13. And we don't want an element to be minus one. You remember in the initial stage, we created minus one matrix started with minus one into ones. So it's more like the button hasn't been pressed yet. So we don't want any element to be minus one. That can be done using apostrophe equals to one, where apostrophe is the sign for not equals to. So see the simple logic. If the element one matches with element two, element two matches with element three, and element three is not equals to minus one, please. Sorry about that. That is the condition where the all the elements are matching. This is a condition of a win. So that's condition simply can be written as result equals to M one comma one. So again, it could be player one, it could be player two. We are going to define it later on based on the value of uh, result that if one has come, player one has won. If value two has come, player two has won. So that, that is why I'm not giving it a direct value one and two. Now we are going to cover the rest of the horizontal conditions. So let me just quickly take it. This is else if. This is going to be row two. So two comma two, two comma two, taking two comma three, value two comma two is not equals to minus one. The value will be M two comma two and believe me we can put any values two and two to two three because all are same so it doesn't actually matter what we are passing on over here in the result so in the same fashion we are going to do for the three this is going to be raw three comma one three comma two three comma two matches with three comma three and three comma three is not equals to one All right, so all the conditions are done for the horizontal part. We are going to do the same for the vertical part now. Let me do it quickly so that we guys don't face any issue. I'm just pasting it. Okay, 
and we don't need this thing over here so let me resize it all right i guess you guys can see my screen properly so in the vertical condition row would be one column would be one it will be matching with the row uh, row number 2 column number 1 so 2 comma 1 this will be 3 comma 1 and none of the element so let's say 3 comma 1 should equals to minus 1 this will be 2 comma 2 and this shall be 3 comma 3 so that should work and i'll just quickly do it 1 comma 2 is equals to 2 comma 2 and 2 comma 2 is equals to 3 comma 2 2 comma 2 is not equals to minus 1 The result is one comma one over here, two comma two over here, and three comma three over there. I guess you guys are understanding. Uh, I'm not being complicated enough over here, so it's very simple. So I guess you guys are able to understand the portion which I'm doing over here. One comma three, two comma three over here. Again, let me just change it. Two comma three is three comma three, and it's not equal to one. So we have taken all the condition for vertical, and finally we have reached to the portion where we are going to take the diagonals condition. So else if this is one comma one is equal to two comma two, and two comma two is equal to three comma three, and two comma two is not equal to minus one, and other is one comma three. So this will be in the reverse side. First row, third column. Should be matching with second row, second column, and second row, second column should match with third row, first column, and two comma two should not be minus one. In that situation, the result is again two comma two. So these are all the condition when we have taken up the inputs, and this is satisfying as a win situation. Now, what if all the elements are filled, but you haven't got the result as of now? That's a tie situation. in that situation we won't have any element minus 1 so i will add one more condition in it else if with an apostrophe is member i s m e m b e r and m comma 1 that shows us that none of the element is minus 1 against and in that situation i'll be defining it the value result equals to minus 1 else that's the final else condition result equals to zero ending it and finally we need to define if result equals to 1 we want to change the label dot text to player 1 won else if result equals to 2 we need to define that the game won by player 2 and and but we need to mention the proper situation as if result is equals to minus 1 in that situation the game is tied the person need to play the game again all right uh, in all this in all these situation we need to disable all the buttons which are already executed or even though there are any button available we want to disable all the button so you remember the earlier the first function we created was startup function we just need to execute this startup function with the app and it will disable all the buttons so we'll be doing it and we need to call this function after every button is being pressed with the value of matrix so let me just add it in the end all right so calculate i guess you are able to see the screen app comma app dot mat so matrix is passed and it will be calling the function let me quickly do it for all the buttons Do you guys see any question or any comment? I don't think Rasiva has responded back. I'm waiting for the comments of any other guys who have any queries. In the meantime, I'll think I have explained the session very well, so you guys are not having any queries. I also want to inform you guys that we have already covered the game on Sudoku and 
tic tac toy earlier sorry tic tac toy is being covered rock paper and scissors so you guys can watch that session on our youtube page all right let's run it so this time when i run this function actually we are going to play the real game so let us see the result new game i'll be pressing o x o x o let me just click x game won by player 2 new game all right we need to add one more thing over here when the new game is pressed all the buttons should start with the value blank or whichever the value was earlier so once i'll define that our game is over and then i'll be playing it with aditya so this thing would be done when the new game is pressed so we need to just look where the new game is pressed we will be changing the buttons text button underscore one dot text equals to blank sorry this is gonna be equals to blank and same thing for all the buttons so one two three four five six seven we have left two more buttons eight and nine okay guys so i have run i have created this code and i think i have covered all the portion of the tic tac toy game if any of you have any doubt any question please comment and if you don't have any question just see us playing this game and having fun i'm clicking new game aditya i'm going to start with o oh, what you're going to choose okay i'll choose these plays over here all right uh, next i choose oh what you want mm i'll go for this okay okay so you lost <laughs> so you lost the game would you like to play once one more time ah uh, yeah i would like to play one more time all right this time i'll be okay so <laughs> uh let let uh this time you start okay i'll start with this okay mm, i'll take this one Mm, okay, I'll go with this. Okay, I'll go with that. I'll go with this. All right. Uh, okay, this is going to be a tie. Yeah, this is <laughs> going to be a tie. All right. So we are not left with any portion, but Aditya could have actually cracked it. The game won by player two. How does? Was there any error in this code? i think so why this game wasn't all right let us check what was the issue aditya can you suggest where exactly we found we had an issue um okay even i'm not sure about it but all right so the issue is this 1,3 when i was pasting all the matrix 1,2 so this was supposed to be 1,2 and that created the value 1,3 is equals to 2 in the earlier stage so this time the program is going to run perfectly all right so this is a final game before we head on to the mario the super fun portion which you guys are looking or waiting for let's start with the new game i'll be taking over here what, what you're going to choose aditya Okay, so let me take O. Aditya, it's your turn. Okay, so if you choose this, I'll take that and I will win. All, All right. right. So this was a really fun part, which I guess you guys would have also enjoyed along with me. Uh, as I end the session, along with uh, my part, uh, I'll just wanted to get your feedback. In case if you guys have any question, any query, please uh, leave your queries in the comment section and i'll discuss it in the later run if there is no queries i feel i have covered the session in a very well manner so that you guys are not stuck at any point all right aditya it's your turn you can go ahead and start the session okay guys so let's quickly start with the sudoku portion and let me share my screen uh, for going with the sudoku you'll have to download few resources for it and uh, what you can do is this is our website matlabelper.com and we'll just quickly navigate and to quickly navigate we have this uh 
link mlhp dot link slash mario blog so your mlhp stands for matlab helper so just uh, i'll just go on click on this link and it will take you to the super mario blog so this is a blog wherein you can uh, you know play super mario or you can download the code and run it on your systems as well so also okay before that i forgot to mention that whatever part gunjin has covered we will be uh, putting it on our blog by next week so uh, you can meanwhile you can just try it yourself you can go with the video you can you know code it yourself and once we put it on your uh, on our blogs you can just check them so this is the blog and you can see a button download resources over here just click on it and it will take you the uh, take you to mathworks.com wherein you'll find uh, now this is the place called uh, mathworks file exchange wherein you can file you know uh, you can wherein you can find all the files which are already been made so we are actually using the super mario uh, open source demo game and let us quickly download it i'll click on download button over here and you'll have to sign in to your mathworks account so what i'll do is i'll just quickly sign in to my mathworks account uh, okay what i i have already downloaded it on my system so i'll not waste much time on it and uh, okay i'll just tell you for the steps you just have to download it it will be a zip file and once you extract it on your system you can directly open it on uh, in your matlab so uh, you will find these files in the uh, that zip file and uh, in that file you'll have to open this stl underscore mario underscore main file so this is our main function file when we'll be uh, modifying or will be i'll just walk you through the code before i go ahead so let me just remove unwanted portions from my screen and so this is the code i'll just drag you to the bottom of the code this code is of 1337 lines so that's the reason we are not actually coding it uh, together and i've directly downloaded the open source thing and you even you can download it from our blogs the link is already mentioned in the description as well so let us quickly get an idea what's exactly happening in this function but uh, this being an open source game we can surely edit this uh, game so you can see in the first part as the name says it's variable decla uh, declaration so whenever we write any matlab code it's advisable to use the code ethics and use you know proper uh, comments for each and every line along with uh, proper in indentation so we have a we have this function over here in matlab which will automatically indent all the uh, all the program lines so that's again helpful uh in the first part we have uh, we will be declaring all the variables so that's uh, mario and all these variables are declared which are frame duration the duration of the frame uh which we are going to set to 1 by 60 which is uh, it, it is equals to about 12 so then we have cycles per frame and we'll move on to next part which is initialization part wherein we will be initializing the variables and will be also initializing the window so the first very first question which ask uh, which uh, which the computer or the which, uh, which the program asked to us is do you want to play this sound so if the answer is yes it will play the sound okay so this is the line wherein a question or a dialog box is open so guys this is a very good feature in matlab to use documentation so if you have any doubt regarding any of the uh, command so you can just go on type help you can go to question dialog you can type the name of the uh, function and hit enter so after this uh, i'm just waiting for the matlab to respond Okay. Meanwhile, Gunjan has already told you about our next coming uh, live session, which is on fifth of October, in which we'll be covering karaoke, and basically we'll be putting an input as any of our uh, song, and we'll be taking out the instrumental part of that song. So here's the documentation part, uh, which uh, which says question dialog box, and this is the proper syntax. 
so proceeding on with the code so there's a if loop over here which will check if if the mario if the mario.mat file exists or not so from the resources which we have already downloaded you can check that the mario music file is present or not and uh, guys if you uh, do not see this file or if this file is absent it will fetch you an error so the next part is will be loading all the stages now this being a demo part uh we'll be just loading the first mario data dot mat file and again uh, to load that we'll be checking it so it's mario stages dot mat and mario data dot mat okay and uh, see you not install or you not find the code every time you want to uh, play this game so i'll also tell you how to install this in the app section so you can find the app tab over here and i'll tell you Uh, in a mean like in few minutes i'll tell you how to install it on your system so that you can play it any time so with proceeding with the code now this is the here we come with the main game cycle here uh, wherein you can you know uh, load the stages template again we'll have the music handle and check if the uh, sound is playing or not so in the add uh, in uh, like in the next part we are going to add a single line at the bottom uh, this is very important to you know handle output so we'll be also printing the frame rate the current frame rate which is act uh, which is at which we are actually playing this game so and then we'll allocate space for the background uh, units as well so you can see we have allotted the background space for all the graphics and we go for current mapping so in this part what happens is whenever the mario hits some something or uh, some uh, you know some element in the program it will either stop there or it will give an error like if the mario is falling from the places where it dies so there will be uh, then the game would stop so proceeding on with this part we have this main group uh, game loop for each stage so so you can just cycle it show fps show mario and this is how the code actually proceeds with and believe me guys if you actually understand the code portion what you can do is you can edit this code and you know play along with this and you can create your own mario so this being an open source thing you can edit it several number of times so let us quickly run the code and uh, see what the results actually look like so it will ask for do you want do you want sound so i'll say yes and uh, you can see the fps as 60 the mario direction is one so we have already printed the direction so if it's going in the right direction it will print as one and if it's going backwards it will print as minus one so let's go on the controls are very simple it's a to go left b to go right k like it's j to sprint and k to jump so this is how you proceed okay there's one fine thing about this part that uh, there's nothing that comes out of this question box or uh, these things so what usually happens is when the mario is uh, you know hitting some portion this program you can see the change in fps so this program stops there and there I'm just trying to proceed with the game, and if it goes out of the screen, the program will be restarted. So I'll just close the program and uh, show you how to install the demo. So, like you have to install it in the app section for installation. You will have one more file in the resources. uh you just you can simply click on this uh, or double click on this file it will ask you to install and you can just say install it into my apps click on install and 
yeah so it will give you a notification app installed super mario bros dot demo so you can just navigate to your app section navigate down and in the my app section you will find super mario bros dot demo so this is the file and you can just simply click on it and okay so it shows an error function stl mario underscore main in current folder shadows the app entry so what you have to do is you'll have to change the current directory so that's the part where you might face some issue so i'll just hit enter i'll change my directory to the main thing so you can see i've already completed the sudoku code in my previous uh, webinar and you can watch the webinar uh in our it's it's a recorded part in our uh, youtube channel so you can just check it out there also we have one more webinar which is scheduled on 5th october and meanwhile i'm opening this my app mario so again you can say if it's asked for do you want sound this time i'll click on no so this is the mario game and yeah you can enjoy it playing your uh, playing it yourself and if you guys have any queries if you guys have any doubts uh, just let us know through the comment section um i would like to thank eravat foundation as well and there was a query which was unsolved uh, from shiva so i will request shiva to you know please uh, let us know what your exact query was okay is there anything you want to say uh, gunjan all right so at this time i would like to thank arawat foundation arawat foundation is working in ensuring that the societal task including the technological or with the with respect to the societal task inclusiveness and the disability is being solved with the help of the technology we are working in the field of prosthetics in the field of robotics iot and all the kind of natural as well as scientific innovation which are going to happen in next couple of years so if any of you guys are looking to volunteer with arawat foundation please get in touch with them through www.arawat.ngo we are going to help you out with the matlab part and arawat is going to help the society with the technological part okay guys so i hope that solves all your queries and uh, you can give a quick feedback on this webinar as well as the webinar which was uh, scheduled today at 6 pm so uh, you can code all the four games by yourself and play it and relax using matlab so that's the thing where most of the people do not use we simply download the game and play it so it's it's something different when you code it yourself all right so with that we are going to end the session right now uh, if you guys have any query any feedback get to us directly through our contact us page we will be looking back to your feedback if you guys want to register for the next live session which is going to happen on 5th october you can do it on our website mlhp.link/live page and thank you again for your uh, feedback or any other suggestions all right have a great day ahead good night bye bye good night guys bye